Close your eyes and imagine you are floating in the air in a spacecraft. You are weightless. It feels so strange yet amazing at the same time. You push off the wall and float down a long room. You feel like Superman flying across empty space. For fun, you duck your head and do a quick flip before landing against the other wall and pushing off it to soar the opposite direction. At the end of the next room, you grab hold of something and stop to look out the round bubble window. Below, you see a glittering blue ocean, clouds, and brown land in the distance. You are 200 miles above Earth on board the International Space Station and flying around the world at 17,000 miles per hour, or 28,000 kilometers per hour. Have you ever heard of the International Space Station? Right now, it's circling the Earth above you. It's going so fast that it orbits the Earth every 90 minutes. That means 15 and a half times a day. That's incredibly fast. Some people think the space station is floating in space, but it's actually falling around the Earth in what is known as an orbit. The International Space Station, also known as the ISS, is special because it's not owned by a single country, but by many countries who work together to build it. It started off as a single module and has grown piece by piece into the larger station it is now. In 1998, Russia launched the module Zarya into low Earth orbit as the first piece. Low Earth orbit means it is still within the Earth's orbit, not far off in space beyond the Earth's strong gravitational pull. Two weeks after Zarya was launched, the United States launched its own space shuttle with the Unity module and its astronauts on board. The next step was connecting the first two modules. The astronauts did this by floating out into space and attaching them, and that is how the International Space Station began. After that, the other pieces were slowly added to the ISS until it grew and grew. In 2000 came the Russian module Zvezda, then NASA's Destiny module. Canada's space program contributed a robotic arm for spacewalks and to make remote control repairs. The Harmony module came in 2007. Then the European Space Agency sent up the Columbus module. Japan sent up its own module in 2008. Next came NASA's Tranquility module. Then Europe's Leonardo module. And finally the Bigelow module sent up by a private company. One reason ISS is amazing is because it's a team effort by many countries around the world. Usually around three to six astronauts live and work on the ISS at a time. It was made for many reasons, but one of them was to do research. Since humans plan to go to Mars someday, they are using the ISS to see how space will affect the astronauts during the journey to Mars. For example, what will spaceflight do to their bodies? What kind of foods will they need to eat? What kind of exercise will they need? Will they be able to grow plants? They've also tried out different devices they'll need in space, such as 3D printers and coffee makers. On the ISS, the crew's days are very busy, and besides doing experiments, they spend a lot of time doing maintenance, which means keeping the station running smoothly. Each astronaut has different responsibilities, sort of like you might have doing chores at home. Only by working together will the ISS continue to work properly. Often the astronauts climb into their spacesuits and spacewalk, which means to go outside the ISS and float around to make repairs. This can be dangerous work, so they always attach themselves to the ISS for safety. The astronauts have also been testing a robot they can use to fly around the ISS and make repairs for them. The other important part of an astronaut's day is taking care of themselves, making sure they eat the right foods, showering, brushing their teeth, and getting exercise. They also do things like video chat with school children and talk about what they're doing with people around the world. They do this to get others excited about the space station and space research. Eating in zero gravity can be very tricky. Their food has to be strapped down to a table and utensils and water bottles have magnets on them to keep them from floating away. If you look on the internet, you can find some funny videos of the crew doing flips, floating around and dancing and playing with water. In zero gravity, water floats around in blobs. People from 19 different countries have visited the ISS. These include the United States, Russia, Japan, Canada, 
Italy, France, Germany, Belgium, Brazil, Denmark, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, the Netherlands, South Africa, South Korea, Spain, Sweden, the United Arab Emirates, and the United Kingdom. Now you can see why they call it the International Space Station. International means many countries. At the ISS, it's exciting to see people from many countries working together. It's a perfect example of how working together, people across the world can accomplish amazing things. Many people dream of visiting space someday, and some companies promise that someday anyone who can pay for it will be able to do it. Right now it can be very expensive, and at times not even possible, to visit places like the ISS. But someday space vacations may be available to everyone. Can you imagine visiting a place like the ISS, or a far-off hotel on the moon? This is called space tourism, and a few very wealthy people have been able to visit the ISS by paying for it, but it costs them many millions of dollars. One of these people was Anusheh Ansari. Anusheh was born in Iran and moved to the United States when she was little. She was interested in engineering and graduated from college to become an engineer. She and her husband later started a company that grew and grew until they were very wealthy. She had always dreamed of going to space and became interested in visiting the space station. When she found out they were allowing some to visit if they paid, she jumped on the chance. First she trained for the journey, then took a Russian rocket up to the ISS and lived and worked there for a short while. There she helped to do experiments and later wrote a book about her amazing journey. One of the most well-known astronauts to live on the ISS is Chris Hadfield. Chris was born in Ontario, Canada. He grew up on a farm with his family where they grew corn. When Chris was little, he became interested in flying and later saw the Apollo 11 moon mission, which made him want to be an astronaut, just like Neil Armstrong. Later, he went to college, then joined the Canadian Air Force. This eventually led to training as an astronaut for the Canadian Space Agency and working on the International Space Station. On the ISS, Chris shared his day-to-day -day activities on Twitter and Facebook, and later made a music video on YouTube while playing a guitar in space. This brought even more attention to the important work they were doing on the ISS. Many records have been set by the crew of the ISS, such as the most consecutive days in space by an American, which was 340 days by astronaut Scott Kelly. The other cool thing about Scott's trip to the ISS is he's a twin, so they're able to study how space affected Scott versus his twin brother who stayed on Earth. Another record was the longest space flight by a woman at 289 days by Peggy Whitson. The ISS also holds the record for the most people in space at once, which was a crew of 13 in the year 2009. Did you know you can see the space station from Earth? With the help of your parents, if you go to spotthestation.nasa.gov, you can sign up to receive text messages or emails whenever the space station is visible above you. Recently, my kids and I did this, and it was amazing to see it float across the night sky like a star. One of the best lessons we can learn from the International Space Station is that by working together, people all over the world can do amazing things. Isn't this so much better than focusing on our differences and fighting? One problem in the world is when people look at those who are different, they think there's something wrong with them because they aren't the same. But differences are what keep the world interesting, and there's so much we can learn from each other, from our different experiences and customs and beliefs. The space station shows that even though we have differences, we have common goals, like visiting space and learning about space and the Earth. As we focus on what's common, we can work together to do great things. Hi, I'm Breck, creator of the Bedtime History channel and podcast. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, be sure to check out our podcasts on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app.